Uh, last week we did on the mystery of the word, but we touched more on the lost art of meditation. Are you guys with him? Using the word to meditate. And uh, we went into two things. We went into confession, the art of confession and the art of contemplation, uh, which is the two sides of meditation. It is a very important message. If you were not here last week, Sunday morning, please go listen to it so you can understand as we go on deeper. Because if you don't get the basic of last week, Sunday, you're going to think we are heretics preaching this part today. Do I have encounter here or not? Because if I'm going to begin to throw out stuff like... Uh, um, stuff that sounds strange to you. It's only because it sounds strange to you because you were not here last week or you come from another church. Is that okay? It's called the meat of the word. I just need a little bit of throw strength. Okay, I'm going to strain my voice. Uh, it needs, uh, it, you know, we need the meat of the word. So, um, uh, so before we get into that, I'll say with you the lost art of meditation. And we're going to get into that right now. Those online, I want you to begin to share this broadcast. Tag people. Get online. Like the broadcast on YouTube. We want to welcome people from all over. And let me just uh, uh, welcome them. We see, people, we see people from everywhere. In fact, you can let us know right now in the comments how many are watching with you and uh, where you're watching from. How many are watching with you and where you're watching from. But I see we have... Uh, locally, we've got from Kales River, Cape Town, Durban, Newcastle, Leidenburg, uh, Pumlonga, Cape Town, Jeffreys Bay, Vienna, Portsmouth, Bloemfontein, Krugersdorp, George, Pretoria East, and international. We have Ireland, Dallas, Texas, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Pakistan, Los Angeles. Uh, if you lifted it, you can drop these ones unless if they are together. Are they together? Not so you can drop this one because this one's feedbacking, but in front by uh, I had to lift it. San Antonio, Texas, Mexico, Des Moines, Iowa, Georgia, USA, um, Cyprus, Caribbean, UK, Australia, Italy, and the list goes on. And we want to welcome you from watching all over the world. We have so many people that are touched by this ministry. We get messages on a weekly basis, daily basis sometimes, of international viewers that are touched by the messages. And uh, that is what God is doing, is allowing the church to go beyond the four walls. In fact, by 2025 coming, um, you know, we're going to see church in a different era. There might be a reason that the Lord has held me not to purchase land per se, to build a big, massive, uh, and we have the monies to purchase the land. Are you guys with me? Purchase land anytime when it comes up, but, but it's like we are battling with the Lord whether we should do it or not. Um, or do we go purchase a facility that can be, that's quicker because it takes forever to build here with the regulations and the finances is ridiculously expensive. You can build for 50 million plus your interior, I think about 50 million. Um, uh, you can, you can, sorry, you can buy and, uh, and do your interior and renovation, everything for up to about 50, close to 60 million instead of 80 to 100 million. But we can do that and uh, have it multi-purpose because the church is going to move into a digital age. And a church as we know it is going to change. The trend is going to change. Um, it is just like that. Um, I think people, you see, let me, and it's going to move into a discipleship system. Jesus never said, go gather crowds. He said, go and make disciples. He never said, go and gather crowds. He said, make disciples. Yet we focus on a Sunday service and not on discipleship. We do as the, as the church, but, the, you know, and the other thing is Jesus spent 80% of his time with 20% of the people that does the actual work. And we as preachers, we try to spend 80% of our time on the 20% that don't do the work. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, you have two types of people in church. You have those who are committed. They are um, in the vision. So they are in an they're e-group leader or they're in an e-group wanting to become an e-group leader or they busy through going through discipleship to become an e-group leader or go into e-group. They're, in the, they're serving, they, they're part of the DNA of the church. Then you have group B, part B. This part of people, they just come on a Sunday or every second or third Sunday, fourth Sunday, and uh, they are there. They fill your church up also. So you don't want to preach against them, but they are there. And because they are there, you have to sometimes tend the messages to them also. But now if your messages is catered only to group B, you're never going to fill and feed your group A. 
Are you guys with me? So try not to be a group B Christian, but become a group A Christian. Because once this thing, and this thing is going to turn, where it's going to go to a discipleship movement, the church all around the nations, it might start in the United States first. And you're going to see many leaders of large congregations beginning to fall. And it is by design. Are you guys with me? It is by design. We're going into a digital age and the church, the church that is on top of it will benefit of it. So that is why we embrace both at, at this moment. South Africa is way behind in the United States, so it might be a while for us to get into this. That's why we still hold on to two and we give all our attention to this, but we also give attention to online. But online is gonna take a bit of a while. It might take five years, six years for South Africa um, to really get, get proper and uh, as that goes in. But at the moment we're on the forefront when it comes into the nation uh, with this. So, Let's get into the stuff for this morning. I first wanted to just take your money. Go with me to Genesis 26 verse 11. Genesis 20, say with me, nothing comes down from heaven unless something from the earth goes up. Say, unless my hand is opened, I cannot receive. So, um, I know now you, how you guys change it. If it is possible, it's fine, it's fine. It looks like it fixed itself. When I walk there, then it's dead. It's fine, don't worry. So nothing comes down from heaven unless something from the earth goes up. Jesus says, unless I go to be with my Father, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, cannot come down from heaven. He said, I need something from the earth to go up so that something from heaven can come down to you. When Elijah was by the altar, by the fire, now first when I, you know, this stuff I will share with a little bit into the dream school that is coming up next week and you need to sign up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, it is going to be uh, amazing. We're going to get into deep stuff there. And, uh, you know, then we're busy planning a prophetic retreat, but an online one to make it accessible for everyone. Uh, but that is going to be very exclusive. And in these things like dream interpretation, touching a little bit on and the prophetic retreat, we're going to get into stuff like stuff that will make your average Christian very scared. But if it's prophetic, you see, you can go into the evangelist and the evangelist will have things on how they evangelize. But, but the prophet gift is the most mystical gift. Because everybody puts the prophet in a box and say that he, he must hear from God the way they hear from God. Are you guys with me? So in, 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 in the prophetic retreat, we will open up the origins of the zodiac and astrology. And before it became demonic, before it became demonic. Okay, so please don't go into it. It was used by the prophets of old. And how God put the stars in the sky. Do you guys hear the feedback under this beam? I told you, eh? In the week. And you guys said, no, 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 no. It's under this beam. So as I stand under this beam, it goes, it goes, it runs on the beam. Like, uh, just to let you know, because we stood there and you said there isn't. So, um, so uh, uh, just to say that with a zodiac, with a, an astrology, were means that were used for prophets to predict. It is just that we are too scared to touch on that side of the Bible. It has been taken away. Are you guys with me? And you see how false prophets began to use those things. But there are truths in Scripture that we have so dulled down and we have said that God can only speak in this one way. For example, how did the, how did the high priest hear from God? All we read in the Bible is that uh, 
he heard from the Lord, said to him, do this, this, this. But how did he hear from God? How did Joshua hear from God? The Bible says he had a, what are those things? Yeah, in the effort, in the, the, the taba, tamar, I'm just talking out of my spirit. And the Urim and the Theorem. I know it's a T, you know. The Urim and the Theorem. But we teach very widely on it. Two stones. One was black. One was like translucent. And uh, they would go and uh, shake the stones or whatever practice. They, it's very difficult to know kind of like what practice they had to hear from. So they would take it with the effort. It was inside the effort. On the effort was the 12 stones representing Israel. So the priest would go and ask the Lord a question. And then one of the stones would begin to glow. Okay, this is historic. This how, that's how God spoke. One of the glow stones would glow. But then it would begin to shine on the, on the crystals. And the crystals had letters on it and names and as it was shining on the crystals it would write out what God is saying are you guys with me now we no longer do that so when the Bible says that they casted lots that's what they did but now we have that Urim and Theorem on the inside of us it is called the witness of the Holy Spirit and it still works the same that He lights up, the Holy Spirit lights up in you. He becomes warm inside of you when there's a decision that needs to be made. Are you guys with me? So listen, I'm speaking to you about ways that God can speak. Is that okay? So that is why we're getting into the practice of meditation, the lost art of meditation. Now you're gonna be offended if you just hear me say meditation because meditation is, we're not speaking of the Eastern meditation. Okay, that's been perverted and twisted. But nothing new, nothing is created by Satan. Satan copies. Are you guys with me? So nothing can leave heaven without something leaving the earth first. Unless the Holy Ghost leaves the earth first. Oh, sorry, unless Jesus leaves the earth first and goes to be with His Father. He said, I cannot send you the Comforter. The sound went flat now again here in front, eh? Oh, it is very flat for me here in front. It doesn't go deep or anything like that. But it's fine. So, um, uh, 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 Elijah, oh, this is what I was saying. Elijah with the altar of fire. And these are the things we're going to get into the dream school and we're going to get into, into the prophetic retreat, but we're going to get into things that we've never taught before. For example, the key of... of uh, Gamma, Beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta, sleep waves, and how prophets prophesy out of those sleep waves. Are you guys with me? And every prophet that hears and is even online will all of a sudden snap and understand, but that's what I've been doing all the time. You see, but those who are evangelists won't understand. Those who are pastors won't understand because they don't do it. They're not prophets. But if we train prophets or we train people to prophesy, and you can train people to prophesy. You can. You can't train people to hear God. No, no, no. I can't, I can't force God to speak to people. But I can train people to hear Him. And then I can train people to prophesy. That is, that is easy. But whether God is going to speak to them is another thing. But then there's another level which we will only share in our prophetic retreat things. Where the Bible says we all can prophesy. And that we all can prophesy. Hmm. I'm going to open it up to the prophetic retreat. And we're going to get into those things. We're going to get into... Uh, uh, water, earth, wind, fire. When you look at the altar, whenever an altar is built, it has to carry all the earthly elements before heaven responds. So what did he do? When, I, when, when Elijah built the, the altar, he put stones on it, so it's the earth. He put wind 
which is the Word of God, the breath of God, when He began to speak. And then He took water and He put it on. Are you guys with me? Then He put the sacrifice on to be touched by fire. And the sacrifice could not be completed until fire came into the situation because He had the other elements except fire. And the moment fire came down from heaven, that was not yet the answer of heaven. It first consumed the sacrifice, which means that fire came down, consumed this, then the answer afterwards came, but requires four elements. That is why Jesus would always go out into the wilderness to depart from and to withdraw himself to go and pray. There's something about the, we call it the thought spectrum, if I can use a safer way, instead of using the thought consciousness, that in a city, there are so many thoughts going around, signals going around, where there's radio signals, people's thoughts, because if you're a prophet, you're sensitive to thoughts, that it's very difficult to hear from God in a busy place. The moment you go out, all of a sudden it's like you can hear God. Are you guys with me? So, um, so say with me, nothing comes down from heaven unless something leaves the earth, unless something leaves my hand. Listen to this, Genesis chapter number 11. Genesis 26, 26, 11. Let me read it to you. Genesis 26, 11. And Abimelech charged all his people saying, He that touched this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Then Isaac sowed. Say with the Isaac sowed. In that land. In that land. So there's a specific land that you can sow in. And received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Say with you the same year. He received a hundredfold. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Say with me, I will become great. I will move forward until I have become very great. For he had possessions, say this with me, say for I will have possessions of flocks, of herds, and a great store of servants. And the enemy will envy me. Have your seats, have your seats. Go with me to Amos chapter number 9 verse 13. I want to give you a promise. This is what the Lord shared with you already last year. I wrote here last year, I said the year of plenty is 2023. And this was the scripture. I just forgot on New Year's to read the scripture. So you're going to get it now. But this was the promise that the Lord gave me for 2023. That's why I call it Goshen because Goshen in its normal vocabulary means plenty. Uh, it also means to draw near to God. Are you guys with me? So I said to you that this year is a year of prayer. It's a year to build your secret place. It's a year to make sure you have a place to meditate on Him. Are you guys, and, I, and I believe we're not going to have immature people. If you sit under this word, that if I use the word meditate, that I don't continue, I have to say meditate in the word, just to appease. I'm going to say meditate. Because there's two areas of meditation. The art of confession, and then the art of contemplation. The prayer of contemplation. Can everybody hear me with this sound? Yes. So, you need to have a place, a secret place where you can meditate on Him. On the promises He has given you. On the things He has done for you. And then we're going to get into a fourth meaning of meditation today. I shared with you the three meanings earlier. The three meanings last week was to, to imagine. Are you guys with me? Number two. To mutter. Let's see who remembers. Number three, roar. Okay. So to imagine, to mutter, and to roar. 
but we're going to get into a fourth one that lines, lights up with imagination. And tonight we're going to go deep. Um, I want you to come tonight. We're going to uh, lay hands on every. I want to lay hands on everyone for uh, this new year, going into this new year, uh, like an anointing service, and we'll be prophesying over many people. Okay, so um, uh, that is tonight. So, so listen to this. Listen to. Oh, so Goshen means to draw near to God, to draw near to Him. It means the land of plenty, the land of luxury, the land of protection, the land of the covering for the meanwhile. While the hailstorm hits the rest of the world and we are on our way to the promise, we are protected there. There are many different promises. There are many people go back and forth and back and forth into their promised land because then you can reach your promise tomorrow and then you have a new promise again. Uh, okay, if you guys understand what I'm saying. And then you have obviously your ultimate destiny and etc. You have purpose, you have destiny. But it's a land of plenty, a land of luxury. It's a land of favor, a land of special treatment, a land of exclusivity. It is a land of the elite that even Pharaoh's own people in his own land did not have it as nice as those who had it in Goshen. It is a land of exclusivity. Are you guys with me? So, 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 and it is a place where you draw near to God. So this year is a place where God is saying, I want my people to draw near to me. I need my people to draw near to me. Are you guys with me? So listen to this. Amos 9 verse 13. We're still by the offering. We'll get to the message now. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Now you all know what that means. But let's get two people out here. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. So, so, okay, let's do it. Stand here. Both of you stand here. Turn around. Okay, you come a bit forward. You are the reaper. So reap slowly, otherwise you're going to walk into there. So reap slowly. And you are the plowman. Plow fast. And there you are. Awesome. But now stop. He's the reaper. He's the plowman. Now the reaper is reaping. But now the plowman is coming past him. Am I saying it right? Yeah. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. He overtakes him. So now he is reaping where he has not sown. Because the plowman is sowing. And he's already reaping. Yes directly after he sowed but that means you're going to reap where you have not sown but you're going to reap speedily that's fine and then it says and the treader of grapes Timothy, the treader of grapes will overtake him that soweth the seeds and the mountain shall drop sweet wine this is what the lord said to me for 2023 and the mountains shall drop sweet wine all the hills shall melt before the Lord. That means every mountain that stood before you, every wall that is in front of you, every resistance, oh Zerubbabel, what is this mountain that is standing before you? They shall melt in the presence of the Lord. They shall tremble and be shaken in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Have you seen? Listen, I'm like losing my voice. I, this stuff isn't holding up. I don't know. Can there be more like depth or gain or something? Like I'm losing my voice. It's like it doesn't feel like my voice goes out at all. Um, please help me. I know it sounds okay if I talk, but the moment I preached, it falls flat. Okay. 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. Otherwise, move these things to the floor. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. This is also what the Lord said. And they shall build the waste cities. So the, I shall build the waste cities. And inhabit them. This means that God is going to give you promises of things. It might not look beautiful. It's a waste city or a city of waste. But you will be able to rebuild them and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards. Say, I will plant vineyards. And drink the wine thereof. Say, drink the non-alcoholic wine thereof. I'm 
They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Now listen. I will plant them upon their lands and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, says the Lord. Which means that the Lord is saying, I will give you opportunities that might look like a waste, but you will rebuild them and inhabit them. And on the land that I will give you, which means properties and lands, is coming to people. I will plant the fruit and grow the fruit, says the Lord. But your reap, your, 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 your plowman shall overtake the reaper. The treader of grapes shall overtake the sower of the seed. The sower, the one that sows the seed. Raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to the Lord. Say with me, I receive this promise for 2023. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you are ready to give right now, I want you to get your seed out. You can get your, I want you to give into this promise and this word that is released. Let me, as you're busy getting your seed out, you'll see the details on the screen. For those who are online, the details on the screen, envelopes in the church and so on, um, with all the codes and you can go to our websites if you're international. Let me say this. A seed properly given. Now I know that's the time for tithe, also for many, also first fruits. First fruits is something that really blesses people. You know, we looked at the accounts and I, and I really, really looked at the accounts. I just like to see it on a first fruit basis. And, and I saw we picked up, we started this church. There was only one person giving first fruits the first year of this church. And uh, when, when we, you know, when we look now, we saw a lot of people. We saw people obviously not be able to give a whole first fruit, but at least they started. So with me, at least I started. But build your faith to a place. Or even say, if you haven't done it this year, you're going to save until next year you can give a first fruit. You will see how God promised, how God will bless you. Because the first of the first fruit makes the whole year holy. We gave a first fruit out of the church. A big, 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 big amount. And I don't, your first fruit must go to a place that is holy. It cannot go to the poor. There is a certain offering that is for the poor that I'll still teach on much later on. Are you guys with me? The, the, your tithe and your first fruit is holy. It belongs to the Lord. So we give it into a place. Now you guys put this one on the floor, but not that one. Huh? Okay. But you can do it. I mean, what is it going to... It's fine, you can do it. So, so, uh, so, there's something that the first fruit and the tithe does when it's together because then it is complete. Now, some people are like stupid. They're like, oh, you know, Leon is saying we must give first fruit and our tithe. No, if you give your first fruit, that is your tithe. It's just that much bigger, but you don't give a tithe on top of it. Because let's get what an, an actual first fruit is my whole income that I set upon. How do you give a tithe on that? No, that is your tithe. But some people, I mean, you know, and, and we've always seen people who complain, they never give. Only those who complain, I mean, only those who give, or those who give, they never complain. Um, you know, the seed has the ability to make God sure, make God comprehend that now you are serious. Let me, let me, let me say this. When Abraham was about to sacrifice his son on the altar, the angel of the Lord stopped him and he said this. He said, now I see that you have faith. So what? You couldn't see before I had faith? So God says, no, no, no. I want to see the act. And until I see that act, it is like you don't have faith. I don't know if you guys are with me. You know, the church by us and encounter really gives and that is why there's always revelation coming out. And that is why there's an atmosphere that, uh, that God will always bless people. But it is for those who tap into it. So if you are here ready to give right now, I want us all to stand to our feet. You can lift up the envelope. Lift up your uh, cell phone if you give via cell phone. Just so there's a contact point. You can lift up your credit card if you give via credit card. There's a contact point. Those online, I want to ask you to stretch out your hands towards the screens. Or if you're giving out right now, just let us know if you're giving. Don't put the amount in the comments at all. Just let us know if you have given. And, um, and uh, none of our guys are going to respond to you. 
I want to say this online, none of our guys are going to respond to you. So if you get any response, that is not us, block them, everything. None of our, um, none of our uh, guys would put banking details or anything on, or any link on forgiving in the comments at this moment of time. It all is on the screen. You can turn your phone, take a screenshot or whatever you need. It's all on there. Or you can go to our website because we have a lot of scammers, okay? People take up in our name offerings and so on. So please be careful of that. So stretch out your finances, your hand on the screen. Also, those in this place, raise your hands. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let the anointing saturate the finances. By a prophet, a nation was preserved. And I speak and declare by the word of the Lord, that this is a year of plenty. This is a year of Goshen, where your people will be protected. Your people will become exclusive. Your people will be in luxury, protected from the hailstorm. I pray for a special blessing upon those that given their first fruit, may the first fruit blessing come upon their lives. May they go in and go out blessed. May they walk around blessed. May everything about their life change. May their finances and any financial lack be broken over their lives. We break every curse upon them of financial lack today. I pray for opportunities to be open this year, doors to be open this year. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. Amen. You can come forward and come and give. Thank you, church. Just move that. Say, move that. people by the card machine that's fine we had encounter we take up a second offering uh, that is our vision fund so this money solely obviously and also any over monies that we have left over every month goes solely into an investment account where a uh, facility where we where um, we are saving up and building up for our next project which is the building project where the buying where the building um, but uh, so that we can as soon as possible get a building we're in the process now of making this building bigger uh, out there so the patio will become part of this um, so it's constructural structural changes and kind of like that, that has to take place uh, it's not going to add on big really uh, maybe 20 people 30 people but we can put some more stuff like the cafe out of there and stuff like that but we're doing our best to see um, what we can do to accommodate more and more people obviously we're going to go multiple services eight o'clock and ten o'clock um, but uh, um, but we you know uh, we need a new building so that is the that is the main thing so your finances will go in there help advance the vision of the lord speaks to you with any amount you can do it there or you can do banking details and give by any th account in there thank you so much Of glory, the Lord. 
can have your seats. Let's get into the message. You know, people make such silly comments. They uh, say that um, because we did the first fruit, uh, you know, this, this prophet is just money hungry, money hungry. Where do you think that money goes to? Oh my God, the stupidity and the ignorance, the ignoramus, moronic. I'm using all biblical words. Foolishness. Um, didn't uh, Jesus mention idiotic also? He did. Um, he's going to go to hellfire. That's what, uh, if I use that word. Okay. So, you know, I don't know what people, because, because crime is in their heart. They judge you of such. If I take it, I'll be in prison. This is a public company. It's a non-profit. We cannot, there is no profit shareholders here. There's no profit here. Though the profit that there is that it's not seen as profit in a non-profit, that goes into our next project. So for every non-profit, you must have the next project lined up. Okay? So, people. And then even despite that, God still chooses to bless us because there's people that comes to a prophet to look for something specific and they bring a seed. That is in the Bible, right from the Old Testament. And uh, that is a practice. You know, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this online. White people have such a poverty mindset. And South Africa has to be very careful. Because they think they're something, but they have a poverty mindset. And that poverty mindset comes by judging if somebody is blessed. We are here to teach you how to become blessed. I don't want that mindset in our church. Are you guys with me? Because God cannot bless a mind like that. He cannot. And I'll get deep into that stuff much later on. Um, uh, that is actually a bit more of our partners. But um, uh, 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 there's a poverty spirit and people think, oh no, you know, a poverty spirit must maybe be on black people. No, 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 no. It is on white people. Hear me and hear me well. Poverty is a mindset. And unless people get their mindset changed. Now I know what I say is very strange because like people think, but how? And uh, it's there. I was praying yesterday and the Lord said to me, oh, my people. When I, he said my people, he, he was speaking of white people. Everybody's his people. But in that sense, he was just saying white people, Caucasian, whatever country you're from has a spirit of poverty they cannot celebrate when somebody else is lifted when somebody else does well they cannot and that causes them not to have anything are you guys with me so so no every cent that comes into the church i don't touch it i don't have access to any bank account in the church are you guys with me i have no access to it I don't even see the bank accounts. I just get a report. That is it. And then make decisions on the basis of that report. Okay? So, and I know it's nobody in here. I'm just addressing some, some mindsets out there. Um, because you wouldn't be here if you thought like that. Although I know there's some spies that are in our midst. They come. And they go speak to a radio. Or they go speak there. But uh, let's get into the Say With Him Meditation. Say it again, say meditation. Meditation means peace with God. Now you're not going to find that in Hebrew or the Greek or anything. I'm speaking of the meaning of it. Um, what it represents. And you cannot meditate unless you have peace with God. Are you guys with me? So listen. In fact, go with me to, where is it now? Genesis chapter number 26 verse 3. Or is that the one I read now out of the prosperity one? Just put Genesis 26 verse 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the one I'm looking for. Huh? I don't know. Go next one. Next verse. Is it verse 12? 
No, that's what we just read now. I'm looking for the one where Isaac went out and meditated. Genesis 26 verse somewhere. Get it for me quickly. Sorry, I don't have that in my note. Sorry? 2463. Okay, I missed that one. 2463. Genesis 2463. Listen to this. And Isaac went out to meditate. Say with you to meditate. To Hagar. In the field at the eventite. At the eventite. And he lifted up his eyes. Mm. Listen, I'm not even going to get into my notes if I have to preach on this. Are you guys with me? And Isaac went, this is the first scripture where it's speaking about uh, meditate, but not where it is indicating meditation. Meditation already happened before this, if you look at the patriarch. So if you look at your Jewish rabbis, the way they would pray scripture, are you guys with me? They would chant the scripture. They would be in a posture of meditation. I'm not speaking of the lotus posture or whatever, uh, posture or whatever that is. I'm speaking of usually, this is by custom now, so please don't go do it, you're almost so. But this is what they would do. It was the, the body would just begin to move in a, uh, in a movement because they, and they would sit, many of them would sit and meditate by chants, quoting the Torah over and over and over and they would just sit like this because the Holy Spirit would come upon them and it would make their body to move but it would take them into a meditative state you cannot do it without the Holy Ghost you will find if you are in our prayer meetings and many of you how do you feel when you pray in tongues it's like you just begin to swing automatically are you guys with me that's like the first, first, first steps. It means that if you really pray properly and you're praying in the Spirit and your mind, the Bible says that your mind is not fruitful. Am I right? When you pray in tongues. Do you know you switch from gamma to beta? I think gamma is the awake. Maybe can you help me? Do you know what gamma, beta? Yeah. Gamma is when you wake up. Am I right? Beta is like when you are awake, I think. In alpha is like before you fall asleep. I might be correct, you can help me. But uh, alpha might be like just before you fall asleep. Now that meditative zone puts you into a place, it makes your mind unfruitful. I'm not saying empty your mind in meditation. I'm saying when you speak in tongues, the scripture says your mind becomes fruitful, unfruitful. The mind is unfruitful because your state of mind is changing to shift into what we call the alpha state sleep state sleep cycle did you get it is it alpha i don't want to read an article you can just tell me what does it say there we go so alpha is creativity and daydreaming it is the brain wave you can sit in the classroom and it feels like you daydream and you're completely out and you're daydreaming. How many of you know I told you daydreaming is a vision? If your Holy Spirit filled, filled with the Word and you are a Christian, it is a vision. But that is the state that you go into if you pray in a meditative state. Quoting the Scripture, praying in tongues, taking the Scripture, hagaring the Scripture, imagining, ponder on it, mutter, roar. Are you guys with me? You go into a meditative state of an alpha brainwave that is like a daydreaming state. Prophets prophesy out of that. And prophets who stays in the spirit stays in alpha all the time. Are you guys with me? So it says, And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, at the eventide, sorry. And he lifted up his eyes. But the phrase lifted up his eyes means that he opened his spiritual eyes. Everywhere in Scripture where the phrase is used that his eyes was lifted, it is an opening of spiritual eyes. I'll show you another place. Are you guys with me? In fact, this is right throughout Scripture, this phrase used. So he was meditating. So he meditating. So meditating caused something to happen. 
his spiritual eyes to open. Where Paul says, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of my understanding, that my spiritual eyes will become enlightened. Mm. Are you guys with me? How does it become enlightened? The Word carries light. The Bible says, with the entrance of my Word, it bringeth forth light. But I need to have this Word with revelation. Are you guys with me? I need to have this Word with revelation. He says, I pray to my God that He'll give you the spirit of wisdom, Sophia, and revelation, Apocalypsis. So all these people say, oh, there's no spirit of... Even this, this, this what, theologian went on TV against us, if you guys watch the show, and he's like, there's no such thing as a spirit of Sophia in the Bible. Have you ever read your Bible? You're a theologian, or an NG Domini, somewhere from, 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 from Univis, Unisa. I can show you about five places where the Bible says that it's, it's a spirit of wisdom, spirit of Sophia. And then a part I can tell you that Jesus is the Sophia of God. They do all TV show and an article that a lesbian wrote. I mean, seriously. So you need to have the word with revelation that brings light so that your eyes can be lifted. Are you guys with me? So when he was in the fields and he meditated, he lifted his eyes. So the next time you read, he lifted his eyes, you read, he opened his spiritual eyes. He looked through his other set of eyes. Where's the scripture? Put it up. He lifted up his eyes and saw and behold, the camels were coming. Mm, I don't know if you guys are with me. Say with you, the camels are coming. Now this is a whole nother... Uh, a whole nother thing, which I just need to see that I'm not jumping myself. No, I'm actually not. So, so the camels are coming. Listen, the word camel in the Greek Hebrew is, Hebrew is what we call gamel. Okay. It is speaking, and another thing speaking of transport, which I'll get to just now. But right now, it is, it, it, it is first speaking of prosperity. Are you guys catching what I am saying or not catching what I'm saying? If this revelation doesn't drop, I don't know what's going on with you. I don't know. Because we're giving you the key to see everything I have today. I found it this way. Sometimes I called it the secret place before I knew the art of that I'm actually the art, doing the art of meditation. New Ages calls it a vision board. We don't call it that. Are you guys with me? I have a vision board in here. And I have a journal that I write. But everything I have today is because I was in a place where I meditated on the Lord. A secret place. And I'll see the house we'll have one day. And I remember we were looking at houses and I never wanted a house where I look into another house. With all due respect, I just thought like, you know, if I'm going to have a prayer room, now I must sit there and somebody's going to peep in from another house. So I didn't want a house that was, and, and God gave us a house ex to the T that what we wanted. From there, I can go on for you like this one after the other after the other that came through this secret. He went and meditated, number one, in the field at the even tide. There's another secret. When things are silent, when things are calming down, it is in the stillness that God dwells. And he lifted, he opened up his spiritual eyes. The meditation helped him. Uh, his eyes of his understanding be enlightened with the spirit of wisdom and revelation because he's quoting scripture, muttering and imagining and, and pondering and roaring. And, but he's in a meditative posture as he's seeking the face of God alone at even tight, his spiritual eyes open and he saw, so with me he saw. Only once his spiritual eyes was open, he saw something spiritual. 
He saw that the camels, or let me change it, he saw his prosperity coming towards him. Which means there's a way and a secret to get prosperity into your life. Mm. Are you guys with me? Mm. Give me a scripture where it's to be, King, King David says, I meditate in your word day and night. I meditate in your Lord day and night. I think it's Psalm 119 or Psalm 101. Mm. Hey? 119. 147, Psalm 119. This one is also fine. Um, definitely not 119, 140. Next part, next verse. No, no, no. We'll use this one, then we'll use the one you had on first. My eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Go to the first one you guys had. On. No, the first one you guys had on. Psalm, no, that, there's one on, with I'm looking for that's Psalm 100. But go Psalm 1 verse 2 in the meantime. Let me have it here somewhere. No, I don't have it yet. But there's one that says, I meditate on your Lord day and night. Not the, there's another one in Psalm over a hundred somewhere, but it's fine. Hmm? On your precepts. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. So say sorry, Leon. Okay, thanks. Psalm 119, 97. Psalm 119, 97. What am I doing? I'm just giving you some scriptures on meditation. Is that okay? Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Say with me, all the day. Everywhere I am, King David is saying, I meditate. Go next verse. Let's just see what the next verse says. If it's anything interesting. Though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Meditation will give you Wisdom. Are you guys with me? So let me, I, I want to give you things that meditation does. Let's, we got about 20 minutes left. I want to give you the keys of what meditation does and how this works. So you understand the kind of like foundation of meditation. Listen, another example. Enoch was walking with God, the Bible says. Now when you walk, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? So they were in full agreement and peace when Enoch walked with God. But he was in such a meditative state and posture that when he was walking with God, because when God's presence comes upon you, scientifically you go into a meditative state. Your brain waves shift, it is proven. Even when you pray in tongues, your brain activity and your brain waves shifts. Are you guys with me? So he was continually in that place until the Bible says that God is for Enoch was not, for God suddenly took him. Are you guys with me? You know, people are trying to accurate, uh, to, 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 to predict the accurate timing of the rapture. Here we have a man who was raptured already, simply because of how much he loved God. Elijah raptured by chariots of fire because he was walking in such a close resemblance of God. Enoch had such an image of God on him that he became dangerous on the earth. Because the Bible says when we behold the glory like a mirror, that we will be changed into that same image. So when I behold the Lord, I am changed into that same image. Every time Enoch looked into the eyes of God, he was changed into that same image. The more he walked, with every step he took, his image and his function was shifting to becoming more like God. Which means that when people looked at him, when you look at the glory and you're not holy, you will die. So he became dangerous until the Lord said, I need to take you out of here. Because you're becoming dangerous and a threat on this earth. 
Are you guys with me? So say with it, peace with God. So meditation, number one, meditation will align you to have an encounter with God. We see it happen with Enoch. Could you put on Genesis 18 verse 1 for me? We see here that Abraham was sitting at the tent door. But when Abraham was sitting at the tent door, according to the practice of the patriarchs, same as your Jewish rabbis, as I explained, they had a posture of meditation. We saw how Isaac went out into the field to meditate. Are you guys with me? I'm giving you a key, a keys that can help your life. And what are we doing? We're taking on full face. The people are going into new ageism and this and that. And uh, they're doing it all for their self and they're seeing that they are God and they're doing all this nonsense. No, no, no. There's a biblical way. The lost art of meditation. And Christians have lost this. And they live busy lives without peace. It is the place, meditation is the place where we meet God. Are you guys with me? It is the place where we meet God. So Genesis 18 verse 1 says, Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth tree of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door, in the heat of the day. He was sitting in a posture of meditation, and God arrived. Now listen to this in the verse 2. Read with me. Say, so he lifted his eyes. So he opened his spiritual eyes. Are you guys seeing it? And looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, say with him, My Lord. There's three in front of him, but he says, My Lord. He doesn't say, My Lord. He has the, as many scholars would say, he has the Trinity standing in front of him God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Some said it was two angels. Are you guys with me? Doesn't matter. His language spoke as if he recognized just the one. Mm. Whether it was the Trinity and he saw, knew that the Trinity was one, or whether there was two angels, he could still discern, this one is God that I'm addressing to as my Lord. If I now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. But now listen to this. Go Genesis 19 verse 1. So Abraham... When he saw the three men, first of all, he was posturing, meditating. And then he lifted his eyes. Why do I say he was meditating? For you to lift your eyes, you have to lift your eyes like this. Do you guys see? I have to lift my eyes. Meaning he was in according to what we can, what we can gather from the scripture and with the scholars as they have taught on this and the behaviors, the practices of the patriarchs, as it is also with the Jewish rabbis, they were always in a posture of meditation. Some of them walked so close with God. Abram was a friend of God. So he was just sitting where he was reciting the word, the law at that time, uh, whatever it might be. And even at that time, they didn't really fully have the law until Abram gave it. So they just had the word in them to a degree. You, 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 you understand? So uh, they were just, um, they were just, uh, and that ties, it was also, those days was also spoken by stories. So, and then he lifted his eyes in a spiritual manner and he saw God with three people walking, two angels, the Lord, or the Trinity. As they were walking, he said, my Lord. Now listen to this, Genesis 19 verse 1. Now the two angels, so the two angels, so by this we can, the scholars are still a bit tight on it, they believe it was the Trinity that came to Abraham, but by this scripture we can say it was two angels that walked next to God that came to uh, Abraham. But now the Lord doesn't come with. It's now the angels came to Sodom in the evening. And Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and he bowed himself with a face towards the ground. And he said, Here now, my lords. Say, lords. So Abraham says with one, My lord. He doesn't even address the other two that's there. A lot, 
has to say, my Lord. Because he was not able to discern God. God didn't come to him there, which tells you he might not have been in a meditative state. Are you guys with me? He came to be saved, but God is like, I'm just visiting Abraham because shall I do anything and hide it from Abraham? That's what the scripture says. Are you guys with me? So meditation, listen, we see that with Abraham, he had the ability for his discernment to be so sharpened that he could see God was in the midst of the angels of the Trinity and he said, my Lord. So meditation sharpens your spiritual perception. The word meditation, as you know from last week, it means hagar. Say with me, hagar. I gave you three meanings, imagination, mutter, or imagination and uh, 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 to, to ponder, and then mutter, and then roar. But there's a fourth meaning. It means to plot something. Are you guys with me? Meaning you can take a scripture that comes to you, and now you take that scripture and you begin to plot on that scripture. The enemy plots on how they will attack their people. God needs His people to plot on how to deal with the enemy or how to deal with the promises of God that comes through meditation of the Scripture. Meaning I take Scripture interpreting Scripture. I don't know if you guys are with me. I get a Scripture when it comes to money. I'm battling with money or my circumstances is not right, right with financially. I get a scripture and it says there will be, I'll take the wealth of the unrighteous and give it to the, uh, to the righteous. So I get that and I begin to plot. How do I plot? I need another scripture that can interpret this one. Okay, um, how am I going to, uh, God is going to give me wealth. How am I going to do this? I go to, I go to, uh, I go to Matthew chapter number six. Give and it shall be given to. Press down, shaken together, running. It's okay, so I have that. But I need another one uh, to see of what God is going to give to me. Then I go to, uh, then I go to, uh, then I go to a scripture that says, that he, that he owns all the silver and the gold and the cattle on a thousand hills. Then I go to Genesis 26 verse 3 and I see that Isaac sowed a seed. So I realize, okay, give and it shall be given back to you. Sow a seed in the first year and you'll get it back. Now I begin to plot the scriptures. That the moment I walk out of my time of meditation, a strategy has been put together. It begins to be life. Now what happens? I mutter what I've plotted. I begin to roar what I've plotted. This is spiritual realities that has the ability to change your outcome, your life. Listen here, this physical life is dominated by what we call the spiritual. Are you guys with me? First the spiritual, then the natural. Have your seats. So it is plotting. Plotting means to kill someone. It is a dangerous strategy. So you're busy plotting for your business, plotting for your marriage, plotting for your finances, plotting for your future, plotting for a certain business contract, plotting for a promise that God has given you. Hmm. Genesis 1 verse 2, just put that up. Genesis 1 verse 2. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering. Say with me, darkness was on the face of the deep. I wrote a post yesterday and I said that prophets has to go into obfuscation. So many times you'll see a prophet, I'm, a, I'm, I'm pastoral in my function as well. But you'll see the prophet in me would maybe disappear for long and it would feel like maybe I'm just a pastor or so. If I wasn't a pastor, I would have to disappear completely. Um, or I go into seasons of a wilderness or seasons of loneliness. It is something that God forces upon a prophet for his eyes to remain pure. It's obfuscation. It means to be retreated into the obscure, into a place of darkness where you can be revigorated again for the next season of your life or the next thing that God is wanting to do. I'm speaking purely for prophets, 
I don't want our, all our church members to go into obfuscation <laughs> next week. <laughs> but there's times when God would want you to withdraw for a time of prayer from family or from the busyness of the day, from certain things. Maybe you feel for three days you just need to go and pray and seek the Lord. We have so much rebellion in the church. I'm speaking as a church in a hall. People will take this word that I've said now to say, oh no, uh, you know, that's not to start my own ministry. Oh, that's to leave the church. I'm going to go in a time of, the Lord said to me, I must leave the church. God is not confused. The day, I thought God told you to come to the church. So first of all, hear God's, understand God's voice before you, because otherwise it's going to be witchcraft because you're going to listen to another voice because the voice of God has to be weighed up, measured up. According to what? The Word of God. A body of elders that can protect. A council, a wise counsel, a group of wise counselors that can protect. It has to be lined up with the peace of God. And if you have a partner, it has to line up with your partner. All those things has to line up. According to Scripture, to know did God speak. When it comes to a major move, people are not blessed because they are vagabonds. They just up and go, up and go, up and go. And God cannot bless them because they cannot be rooted. It is the tree that is rooted that is blessed. Are you guys with me? It is the tree that we're going to be a bit late so you can just tell them. It is the tree that is rooted that is blessed. So the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters. I might carry on a little bit tonight uh, and then get into the other things if I don't finish. But the Holy Spirit hovered, which means he was a uh, hovered means that it's a the word rakaf to hover. It is to flutter in constant imagination for a positive outcome. So the Holy Spirit was on the waters, fluttering in constant imagination, meditating for a positive outcome. So you cannot do meditation without the Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me? You cannot sit and go, um. Okay. If you want some sound, at least put a scripture in there or something. And make sure it's the Holy Spirit. And remove Buddha statues or whatever, okay? So, 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 so. Why did I mention the scriptures of prosperity when I said given it shall be given back? Da, da, da. Because meditation will bring prosperity to you. Are you guys with me? We saw it with the camels, but let's look Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Day and night you shall meditate. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, so you must meditate, number one, then you must observe it, and then you must do it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Success does not come without prosperity. Success in ministry does not come without prosperity. Somebody once said to me, you cannot do anything with, in ministry without money. You can with the anointing, it's gonna take long. But imagine we had a hundred million. We could build a building now. So you're limited by the amount of finances. Your destiny is limited by your amount of finances. Your success is limited by your amount of finances. Your influence, your significance is limited by your amount of finances. So never say it is God's will for me not to be like that person. Never say maybe God hasn't intended, no. God looks at the image you present in the secret place. The Bible says, as the Father sees in secret, He reveals openly. So He looks to see how you see yourself in the secret place. Do you see yourself as a successful entrepreneur? Do you see yourself, I will have this business within a year with so much money. I will have property here. This will happen. God sees that you have that identity in the secret place. And He begins to shout it from the rooftops. And He brings it into manifestation on the outside. I don't know if you guys are hearing what I'm saying. He looks to see what is on your inside. How do you value? How do you think yourself? What words do you say inside of you? And He makes it manifest on the outside. 
Listen, listen, listen. The lady with the issue of blood said this. The Bible says she prayed and said within herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. God didn't have to answer that prayer. She answered that prayer. She said within herself, and then she walked and she touched the hem. Have your seats. I hope this brings deliverance. I hope this brings deliverance. So first prosperity, then success. You need money. I'm going to say it again. You need money. Why? To do what you need to do for God. Number two, you need money to bless others, to give to the poor, to advance the kingdom. You need money. I saw these people messaging me. So, I'm going to have to carry on tonight because this is a very good word and I don't want to jump it by. Meditation, well, let me just finish with the prosperity, but will bring you prosperity. You see, Eastern meditation says keep your mind quiet and empty your mind. Christian meditation says you speak it, understand that everything in this kingdom is faith and voice activated. How do I receive salvation? I believe in my heart and I speak with my mouth. So this faith and voice, this is how meditation works in this kingdom. Are you guys with me? Now there is a place for stillness, which we call contemplative meditation. Remember I said to you, meditation has two sides. It's the confession, but then there's the contemplation. The contemplation is where you do your imagination, Imagining, I want to say visualizing, but people have messed up that word so much because now they continually think a new age. No, it is actually in the Bible. Uh, but let me say imagining, where you sit and you imagine and you see the promises of God for your life. You see what the scripture that you have plotted, you, you look at it, you see it. that'll be in a place of stillness. How do I meditate? I'll share that tonight, not this morning. And I'll give you a practical thing of what I do. But it is not emptying your thoughts. Are you guys with me? And we see that also to the camels that came. Go with me to Hebrews 13 verse 5 to 6. Hebrews 13 verse 5 to 6. I'll close now. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For He Himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Listen to this. So that we may boldly say, stop there. The Bible says that God has spoken. And when we hear Him speak, we can boldly speak. So how do I get the boldness to stand upon here and speak under anointing? Because I heard Him in my ears speak. When this word came to me, I was in my secret place. Are you guys with me? Mm, so that when I hear him speak it will give me the boldness to speak this is the meditation the art of confession mm, you first hear God speak then you get that scripture and you begin to mutter but it must be God speaking to you because even if you get the scripture out of the word it must be rhema not letter not just graphe it must be rhema for faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God faith comes by rhema and rhema what is rhema what I'm preaching to you now is rhema are you guys with me let's stand to your feet let's stand to our feet I will be here tonight with the anointing service as well we'll finish off the message and uh, did you hear that? Yeah. And we'll finish off the message. And, uh, and we're going to go deep and so on. So raise your hands to the Lord. La brusca de noska de da bias, que daia te le de muscataia. Zecasco de la mambrusca de le de escataia de lendes, que ten de lescataia. La chabrusca de escataia. 
Mambios kate kele brodonos kate kaya. Membros kate le bredos kate keda la baya. Father, I pray right now for each one that is here. Under the sound of my voice, let the blessing of the art of meditation rest upon their lives. I pray for a transference of the Holy Ghost and this revelation right now to be upon them. I pray for the anointing to increase. I pray for the gifts to increase. I pray that you'll draw them to the secret place. I pray that you'll draw them to the even tide, as the scripture says, to the place where their eyes can be lifted, to the place where they can be alone with you, drawing near the Goshen place. I pray for the anointing to rest upon them, that they will grow in this ability to know your word and get into your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give a praise offering, church. Amen. Amen. If I may ask everyone to remain standing for a moment, every eye closed, no hands raised, please. And no one looking around. This is a very sensitive part of the service. As we do an altar call now, before I get into this, I'm not going to call you to the front. And uh, this is also for those connecting on live stream with us in this morning. If you are standing here, if you are connected with us over live stream this morning and you're saying, Pastor Martin, you know what? I've heard the messages over the past two Sundays that really touched my heart. I could feel a new fire being stirred in my heart. I used to be on fire. I used to have the zeal. I used to have this passion for God. I lost it. Life just got to me. And I've lost that passion and that zeal that I used to have. And I started living a life that I should not have lived. But in this morning, I'm making a decision that I want to turn my life around again. I want to recommit my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I always state this because I want you to understand the severity of the situation that if you are to leave this place right now when you die when you breathe your last breath understand that there are only two destinations there's only heaven and there is only hell you cannot choose something in between do you know for certainty that if you must breathe your last breath right now what will be your last and final destination will it be heaven or will it be hell and so if you are standing here right now and you have the slightest of doubts and you are not certain then this call is for you and as you are standing here even in this morning and even for those connecting over live stream and you're saying you know what I can feel that tugging in my heart that pulling of the Holy Spirit then th that is that is God calling out he's reaching out to you on this morning do not ignore the voice of the Spirit. amen if that is you and you say pastor Martin I want to recommit my life to Jesus Christ those connecting online I want you to respond typing in the comment section saying that it's me just type it's me and for those physically in us if I can ask you for a moment to lift up your hands for me if that is you just raise your hands I see some hands going up I see the hands just keep your hands up for me please high up just keep it up no one looking around every eye closed I see the hands going up I want to give it a moment I see I still see people looking around don't look around if this was you you want every eye closed I want to give it a moment. Listen to the voice of the Spirit and only in order to feel, if you feel that I should raise my hand, just lift up your hand. You've got nothing to lose but everything to gain. Keep your hands up for me, please. Just keep your hands up for me if I can ask the usher. I still see hands going up. I want to give it a moment because people have this internal struggle whether should I lift my hand? What will the person next to me think? What will the person behind me think? Listen, do not worry about that. We're speaking about eternity. You don't want to play with this. I want to give it a moment. I just want to give it a moment. I still see hands going up. I want the ashes just to please locate those raising their hands for me. And just signal me, I'll be good. Thank you so much. You can lower your hands. I'm going to pray a prayer. I want everyone to pray this prayer off to me in support, especially to those who have raised their hands. Amen. 
saying, Holy Father, I ask of your forgiveness for every sin that I am guilty of. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and that He died on a cross for all of my sins. Holy Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may you wash me, may you cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb. Say, Holy Father, I renounce, I deny, I reject in the name of Jesus every sin, every transgression, every inequity. In the name of Jesus, I command these things to loosen me and to go in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, may you forgive me. I receive your forgiveness, your mercy, your compassion, your grace, your unconditional love in full measure for me here and right now. Lord, I love you. I receive a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, may you fill me with your Holy Spirit in this day. Lord, I love you. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the living name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Come on, just give God a praise offering. Then for those who have raised their hands, if I can ask you to just stay behind for five minutes, there is an usher standing by your side that will spend five minutes with you. Please do not leave until they have spent some time with you. And then for those connecting online that have responded to the call saying, it's me, you can head over to our online church where we do have a team on standby ready to pray with you, minister on to you. Please don't leave until you've gone over to the online church. And then if I can ask everyone just once more to close your eyes, raise your hands to heaven. You surrender to God as we close the service in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for another revelatory word that you have shared with each and every one of us. Father, I pray that every heart be lifted up in this day, be filled with your Holy Spirit, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that the, the swell of our hearts be fruitful, my God, so that your word that is continually be going out from this pulpit, that it will fall on fruitful ground and thereby bear much fruit. Father, I pray that we will have the ability by your spirit to practically apply everything that we receive from this pulpit. Lord, I pray for skill and understanding to be imparted with your word that is being shared. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise in the living name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, give God one more praise offering. Amen. I mean, then the service this afternoon will start at 4 p.m. We're starting with prayer. 4 p.m. prayer. Uh, I don't hear people getting excited about this. We're starting 4 p.m. prayer. Prayer changes the atmosphere and we'll get it ready for what is to happen. Are you guys with me? For the church effectively starting at 5 p.m. Prophet will be in the house. Anointing service. Invite someone. Thank you so much, Encounter. We love you and see you tonight. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to EncounterChurch.co.za or LeonDupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available.
which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.